Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dare to Self Care. I'm Samantha Barry. I'm the editor in chief at Glamour, and I'm so excited to be here with Cara from CBS and all of the amazing speakers that we'll have later on the day to talk to you really about what self care looks like. Cara, why is women's wellness and self care so important to CBS? We know as women, we often take care of everyone around us before we take care of ourselves. And if you just think about the pandemic and the effect the pandemic has had on women, women are 50% more stressed than they were the year prior. Women are leaving the workforce because they are needing to flex their own schedules, handle childcare, be a teacher at home, and it's stressful. And then if you look at what that means, that stress, that taking care of others has really weighed heavy on women and mothers and caregivers. And what we're seeing is the population of women not being as resilient. And we can't have that. And as CBS Health Aetna, we are passionate about women. We are passionate about health and well-being. And we're so excited to be a sponsor. This is just a part of our DNA. And our DNA is all about helping people be the best they can be. Kicking off the event today, we have um, Eve Rodsky, the author of the best-selling book, Fair Play. The defining question of my life became this. What if we treated our homes as our most important organizations? When you hold the cognitive labor, the conception and the planning, and split it up with the execution, that's a fundamental systems failure that can be solved. And so I began to reimagine a system for the home that was based on this understanding that when you hold the conception, planning, and execution together for a task, whether it's extracurricular sports for your kids or feeding them lunch, it is revolutionary. And that ownership mindset is what Fair Play is based on. Now, how do you get there? Well, it requires a complete reimagining of three things, your boundaries, your systems, and your communication. So when I mean boundary, I mean the thing that Fair Play is based on, the most important thing I can tell you today that will kick us off, your time is diamonds. And once we recognize that a true boundary is recognizing that all time is created equal, that women just get 24 hours in a day, and we deserve just as much time choice over how we use that day than our male counterparts. That is the beginning of understanding a true boundary. So when you get up in the morning, for instance, like what is that first conversation you're having with yourself? What is it? Hey, happy to see you. Or is it, oh girl, look at those bags under your eyes. That inner critic will sneak up on us if we're not careful. And what I am trying to bring to our awareness is rewiring our brain to be kind to ourselves. I hear self-care so much, but what does it really mean for me? It's emotional health, it's physical health, it's mental health, and it's spiritual health. And so I have to make sure that I'm doing something in each one of those categories that fills me up. What do you think has held women back from that prioritizing that self-care? I think it's cultural and it's the messaging we've had in society that we are valued and we are loved if we put other people first. We cannot show up for our parents, for our friends, for our partner, for our neighbors, unless we're showing up for ourselves first. We are not a patient culture. We are a culture that tells you that you can uh, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps because it's personal responsibility. And even when we're not hearing those things outright, we're hearing them in sneakier ways. I didn't even have to look for these. These came to me on Instagram. Things like your only limit is your mind. Your only limit? Focus on the good. Like, sure, yes, yes, yes. But that doesn't make the bad any less real or good vibes only. I hate to say having your husband die is a bad vibe, is a bad vibe. So no wonder I thought that I should shove it away, that I should do my best to be okay. It's no wonder that we are conditioned to think that the hard things that we go through are an interruption to our life instead of life. This is all life. I'd want you to ask each other questions about 
what else in your life you carried through this past year. I'd wanna know about your cognitive style. Are you an optimist, a pessimist, a realist? I'd wanna know about your beliefs, your belief systems, the things that you lean on, your values and what's important to you, all of those social, social and socioeconomic variables that make your experience fully yours. And what I hope you would see as we do this and as you're doing this, wherever you are, is that your normal and my normal are different. The next time that you are asked this question, I want you to pause and I want you to really take it in. It's very easy to take this big question, how are you? How are you? And minimize it and, and, and take it down to nothing but small talk. It is a radical act of self-care to practice emotional honesty. I want you to tell the people who care about you the truth, and I want you to tell yourself the truth. You know, the question of what gets in the way for women, um, really we need to keep remembering that it is the system. It is the system that we live in that has not prioritized childcare, just has not prioritized um, good healthcare services, that has not pri prioritized paid parental leave. So I really want all of the women who are listening in today to remember that if it's hard for you to do self-care, because as a woman, it is really difficult to make time for self-care because you're living in this system that isn't supporting you. Everything that I did for my like emotional, mental, physical well-being was something I considered something I would do in my discretionary time. You know, so after everything else was done, then I would, you know, go for that run or call that friend or read that book or you know, whatever it is that's meaningful to me. But you kind of get into a in a system where everything is never done. So you really have to flip how you think about self-care and become pretty intentional and what I say ruthless about making that space because sadly no one is going to encourage you to take it. You know, we really have been culturally conditioned to take care of everyone and everything else first by overriding a lot of this cultural messaging that we get as women that says um, women are not breadwinners, women are not wealth builders, wanting more money is selfish, you know, men are better investors, which by the way, research shows is often not the case, but it's really about challenging those disempowering messages that so many of us have absorbed without often even realizing. You know, we absorb them and then they inform the choices that we make with our money. But that's not the way a lot of us were raised. You know, that is the way many men were raised. And so they start from the get-go, their first paycheck, they're saving and investing, you know, they're building credit so they can buy a home one day. They're going for those raises, they're going for those promotions so that they know they'll earn enough income to take care of themselves for life and probably a family too. But we need to be thinking this way as women too. I mean, this is the way that we really start to expand the way we think about our financial capabilities and the possibilities for our lives, you know, to earn more, to invest more, and to really set ourselves up financially so we can truly take care of ourselves both now and in the future. And finances is just a huge part of that. Being your authentic self is true freedom. So if you get to know you, and you know 100% without the shadow of a doubt, I know what I like and I know what I don't, right? People will know how to treat you, right? They'll also know that, oh, she can't be persuaded. I can't get her to do something because she knows who she is. So I always tell people that know who you are, and if you don't know, know you. How did you start communicating with others to set that boundary? Uh, honesty, right? A, being honest with myself about what I need and being honest with other people about what I need and how to treat me, okay? A lot of times uh, we're not honest out of fear, but that fear does not belong to us. It's not ours to hold. We deserve everything that we feel we need to be um, like to feel amazing and to be amazing. We deserve all the things that we feel we need. But you have to love yourself enough to say, wait a minute, I mean, I, I don't need to carry all this. I gotta be vocal and say, hey, look, I need a little help. Nothing is wrong with asking for help. That's your truth. When you need it, be honest with yourself about it. 
but honesty will always help you communicate. I want to thank all of the panelists that spoke today. As Eve says, time is diamonds. So we really appreciate for them to spend spending their diamonds with us today. Thank you so much. 